Elon Musk, what's the vision here? What are you trying to do to the car industry? Well, I'm trying to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. So try to get, uh, try to get the car industry to move towards um, electrification uh, faster than they would otherwise move. So the, the, the fundamental value, long-term value that I see for Tesla is serving as a catalyst to accelerate the transition to sustainable transport. Why electric cars? What, what, why is that important? Well, electric cars um, are zero emission at the car level, so they're not um, producing CO2 or nitrous oxide or sulfur oxides or any of the um, sort of the noxious gases that uh, uh, any kind of combustion engine car would produce. Um, and so if, if we can have sustainable energy production and combine that with electric cars, we have a long-term sustainable future. And how, how's that going? I mean, you've made a, a deal of progress, but do you see us all having electric cars in 10 years' time, or is it going to be always a minority pursuit? No, I, I think uh, all transport, with the exception of rockets, will go fully electric. Um, so that's why, I mean, I see the, the value of, of Tesla um, as, an, as an accelerant, as a catalyst in that transition. Um, I think Tesla maybe, when one looks back on it from an historical perspective, it, it might accelerate that transition by a decade, maybe, maybe more. Now, this is a, a great car, it's an exciting drive, but at the moment, it's just for the rich, isn't it? Is this really well, gonna mean anything for the mass market? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Tesla strategy from the beginning has been to start off with a low volume, high price car. That was the sports car that we first uh, did in, in partnership with Lotus. Um, and then the, we have the Model S, which is kind of a mid-priced, mid-volume car. Um, and, and actually, when you, when you look at the, the price of the Model S, um, inclusive of the cost of petrol, uh, it, it actually is a lot more competitive than, it would, than you'd think. I'm um, not going to be able to afford one of these, and nobody I know is. Um, well, I think um, uh, it, it's certainly not um, a low-priced car. Uh, I'm just saying that if you were to lease or finance the car and compare the, the lease or finance cost with a much lower cost of operation of an electric car, your monthly cost of transport uh, is a lot more competitive than it may seem at first glance just looking at the price of the car. But are you on the road to producing a model that far more people could aspire yes. to? Uh, so the, the Model 3, uh, that's the third part of our strategy, uh, which is right, produce a high volume, uh, low cost car and uh, we expect to be in production with that at the end of next year. Is that all on schedule and what, what are the ambitions for that car? Is that the one that will really make this revolution that you've been talking about happen? Uh, I, no question, in, in order to um, have a, a substantial effect on, on transportation, we have to make the cars affordable. Um, so I think the, the Model 3 is extremely important as part of that strategy. Um, unless there's an affordable car, um, we will, as you alluded to earlier, only have a small impact on the world. So it, it needs, we need to make a car that most people can afford in order to have um, a really substantial impact. How important is it for you that people's lives are changed in this way? Obviously it's important for this business because you've lost a lot of money so far. You need to have a mass market car. But is it important for you uh, as a thinker that, that people have electric cars, that, that that sustainable vision comes true. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole, the, like I said, the whole point of Tesla is to accelerate the transition to sustainable transport. Um, if we could have made an affordable car right off the bat, we definitely would have. Um, it's just that it takes time to refine the technology. When you think of any new technology, it takes multiple versions um, and economies of scale in order to make the technology um, accessible to the general public. I mean, you can look at, say, cell phones. In the early days of cell phones, they were very big and heavy and very expensive. Um, but with successive uh, design iterations and scaling up the production, um, we've brought it to the point where um, for $100, you can buy um, basically a supercomputer in your pocket. How soon will most people have an electric car? Is this a very long-term vision or is it going to happen soon? Well, I think it's going to happen... Um, sooner than people think. I mean, the, the typical curve of new technology adoption um, is it, it's like an S curve. So it starts off quite slow. Um, and uh, generally, people tend to predict, uh, to base their predictions on a straight line. 
uh, as opposed to a curve fit. Um, and w but when you have an, an, an S curve of adoption, if you make a straight line extrapolation at, at the beginning of that S curve, it's always going to underestimate uh, the actual adoption rate. Um, so, um, but, but I mean, if you look at, say, what Tesla's doing, um, every year we are doubling our total cumulative production. So, um, at the beginning of last year, we had 50,000 cars in total on the roads worldwide. And then last year, we produced another 50,000 cars. So the total fleet of Tesla vehicles doubled last year. And it will approximately double again this year. Meanwhile, Detroit, the traditional motor makers, seem to have woken up. Um, is, is it not true that the likes of BMW are eventually more likely to bring electric vehicles to the masses than Tesla? Well, I say more power to them. If they, I mean, I would certainly encourage uh, their actions on electric vehicles. Um, and, and for all, um, all manufacturers, I hope they uh, produce as many electric vehicles as soon as possible. That's the, the right thing for the world. What do you think their record has been like so far? Has, has, has Detroit and the traditional motor industry been caught napping? Well, they, they didn't really believe in electric cars. They didn't think that it was technologically possible to create a, a compelling electric car. And they felt that even if, um, even if someone did create an electric car with long range and high performance, that people wouldn't want to buy it because they have some deep love of gasoline um, and, and that it's vital to be able to refuel in five minutes. Um, so with, with Tesla, we were able to disprove those um, axiomatic errors. Um, so with the, the Tesla Roadster, we were able to show that you can, in fact, create a, a very fast, attractive, high performance, um, great handling electric car. Um, and that if you made such a car, with, with long range, and if you, were, if you make such a car, people would buy it. Um, so with, with, the, um, with the Tesla Roadster, in fact, the, the, that, that's really what got General Motors to do the Chevy Volt um, and Nissan to do the Leaf. Um, so we, we, we announced the uh, Tesla Roadster in mid-2007 um, and Bob Lutz, um, he's told the story many times, uh, took, the pr took our press release to his engineers and said, if a little company in California can do this, why can't we? Um, and that's what got uh, General Motors to do their electric vehicle program, which in turn encouraged the other manufacturers to do, to do electric vehicle programs as well. Um, but, uh, but, but those programs for the most part have been, uh, or really, I'd say almost entirely, with the exception of maybe the LEAF, um, have been of quite low volume. Um, and uh, more, more, in, more inclined towards um, uh, satisfying regulators. Um, um, but, but now I think we are seeing a change because people are seeing that Tesla is able to sell quite a few, um, quite a few electric cars in, in a normal car segment, in, in, a, in the premium sedan segment. Um, in, in fact, we were the, the best selling car in, the, in our segments in the United States last year. So more than, you know, more than Mercedes or BMW or Audi in, in our segment. The technology industry generally suddenly seems incredibly enthusiastic about getting into the motor industry. We've obviously had Google with its self-driving car. Right. Do you see uh, that continuing? And do you, do you see Apple building a car and that maybe being a threat to you? Well, um, I, I think I, I, I would encourage uh, more participation. Um, by whoever it is to create electric vehicles. Um, it, it's, it's quite hard to do, um, but I think uh, companies like Apple will probably make a compelling electric car. It seems like the obvious thing to do. Are you betting that that's going to happen? Have you heard anything? Well, it's pretty hard to hide something if you hire over a thousand engineers to do it. So you think Apple is serious about it? Yeah. I do. <laughs> this is an open secret. Uh, and will that be a threat to you or will that just expand the industry? I, I think it's, I mean, I think it will expand the industry. Um, I mean, te certainly Tesla would aspire to still make the most compelling electric vehicles. I mean, that would be our goal. 
um, while at the same time trying to help other companies make electric cars as well. Um, so, for example, last year we open sourced all of our patents, so anyone can use any of our patents for free. You've also been a leader in uh, autonomous driving, in this road to the self-driving car. How far do you think that's going to go? I mean, I think the, the two biggest revolutions in transport are electrification and autonomy. The, those are the and it's yeah, so th those are the two biggest innovations since the moving production line, and they're both happening at about the same time. Um, I think autonomy is extremely important, um, and I think in the long term, nobody will buy a car unless it is autonomous. It will be like having a manually operated uh, elevator or something like that. So it's a strange anachronism. In 10 years' time, what will I be driving? Or will I be driving at all? Will I just be pressing a, a button on an app, uh, a car will drive up and, and take me where I want it? Yeah, you, you will only drive if you want to drive. Um, it, it'll be like owning a, uh, owning a car that is not self-driving in, in the long term um, will be like owning a horse. You would own it for, and you would use it for sentimental reasons, but not for, you know, not for daily use, really, unlikely. Uh, now, you, uh, you've had taken a lot of interest in artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, this is becoming an artificially intelligent car. Well, uh, uh, it's narrowly, narrow artificial intelligence. Um, you've also expressed concern about where that's heading. Is that because you've looked at what that car can do and have thought, what happens if it develops a mind of its own? Why, why are you worried? No, we don't need to be concerned about the cars. The cars, this is... Uh, I mean, car, a car is not deep AI. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a narrow use case. Um, you know, we're not trying to build sentience into the car. Um, it's just trying to look at the lines on the road and steer correctly. Um, and I would consider that to be essentially a solved problem. Um, it's just a question of um, re refining the details of the technology and bringing that to market um, and then improving um, the nines of reliability. So um, in, in order to have a self-driving car, you really have to have many nines of reliability. So it's 99.9999%, something like that, is, is, is how good it needs to be. Um, or, you know, if, 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 let's say, to first approximation, um, you'd want a self-driving car to be an order of magnitude uh, safer than a human-driven car. And if, if, if you're like, okay, it's 10 times safer, then it's like there's no more doubt, there's no more debate um, about wh which one is safer. Um, but but it's, it's still a narrow use case. Um, the, the cars are not going to develop uh, consciousness um, or decide that they want to take over the world or something like that. Um, I think we really need to be more concerned about uh, deep AI. Yeah. And why do we need to be concerned about that? Well, I mean, because there are, I think, scenarios where um, if there's some vast intelligence that um, uh, either develops a will of its own or is subject to the will of a small number of people, um, then we could have uh, an undesirable future. I mean, if you want to read a real scary one, I'd say uh, uh, Harlan Ellison's I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream <laughs> will give you nightmares. You read a lot of science fiction. Is it giving you nightmares at the moment? This, this it has given me nightmares, yeah. Uh, and are you genuinely, when you, you've been one of the prime movers about uh, AI. I interviewed Stephen Hawking last year. Right. had similar concerns. Um, is that a, a short-term concern, or is it something way off that we don't need to worry about for a long time? It's going to come faster than anyone appreciates. I think it's, with, with each passing year, the sophistication of, of computer intelligence is, is growing dramatically. I, I mean, I really think we're on an exponential uh, improvement path of um, artificial intelligence. And the, and the number of smart humans that are developing AI is also increasing dramatically. I mean, if you look at like, the attendance at the um, AI conferences, they're, they're doubling every year. Um, they're getting full. Um, I have a, 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 a sort of a young cousin of mine who's graduating from Berkeley um, in computer science and physics, and I asked him, like, 
well, how many of the smart students are studying AI in computer science? And the answer is all of them. Now, you're in three extraordinary industries. You're in electric cars, you're in uh, rockets, uh, and you're in uh, solar energy. What unites you? Uh, what unites those, those three interests? Well, the, what, what I'm trying to do is to um, um, minimize uh, existen future existential threats or to take whatever action I can to ensure the future is good. Um, I didn't expect these companies to succeed. Uh, I thought they would most likely fail, uh, particularly Tesla and SpaceX. I thought SolarCity had a higher probability of success. Um, but um, I, in the beginning, I thought SpaceX and Tesla maybe had a 10% chance of success. Um, and so I'm quite surprised, really, to see that, they're not, that we're alive. Um, it's great. I wasn't expecting that. And are you now more confident that they, each of them will be a success? I, I do feel it's though they've reached um, a level of progress that makes it unlikely that they will, that, unlikely that will, they will die in the near term. Um, in both Tesla and SpaceX, have a lot of customers. Uh, we sort of built, really earned the trust of a large number of customers, and um, and these are really solid organizations, or, or like really, you know, I think thoughtful end customers for the car. And, um, I, and I think like whenever your customers really want you to succeed, then you, then you you, t you will succeed. Finally. Uh you're obviously a very competitive person. You're competing with the likes of Jeff Bezos uh, in... Uh, Jeff who? <laughs> in rockets. You're competing with Detroit in yeah. the motor industry. You're competing with regulators yeah. when it comes to Solar City. Uh, what drives you? Is it just, I am right and they're all wrong? Um, well, no, I mean, I, I actually really take the position that I'm always to some degree wrong. Um, and the aspiration is to be less wrong. We're always to some degree wrong. All, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, and I think trying to minimize um, the wrongheadedness over time is, is that, I believe in that philosophy. Um, and, um, I, and I mean, I, I think these, there's, there's some things that are important for the future, sustainable energy, obviously, sustainable transport, um, ultimately, ultimately becoming a multi-planet species and, um, and traveling out there among the stars. I think those are, those are great things. Those are the things that make me like the future and, or be inspired about the future. Um, whereas if those things don't happen, the future I think looks quite dim. Um, and um, and I, I, mean, I just feel quite fortunate that we've made the progress that we have on, on those fronts and uh, we'll aspire to make more progress in the future.